all. No appeal and no and no, and no, and no, and no, and no grace. And no evident law. You don't know right. you don't know no law. you don't even know yeah. what your sin is. Because in this book here is a man judge you, you know that he has sinned, but he see, or maybe he does know, but the reader never knows. He doesn't know because what he tries to do to um, defend himself is to bring up every action of his life and review it in his mind, saying, I've got to defend everything I did because I know I, I feel guilty. I must be guilty, and yet I can't tell what I did that was the guilty thing. So well, do you know that from in the letters to his fa in the letter to his father, which uh, Incidentally, he gave to his mother, who destroyed it, or, or, or never showed it to his father. Uh, he says, uh, uh, he uses an absolutely horrifying image when, the, when he says that he imagines his father, he tells his father that he, very often he imagines him as a s spread across the map of the world, and everywhere that his father touches is his father's domain and he can only exist in those parts of, of the, on the map where his father doesn't touch. In other words, his, he was so... Real Oedipal problem where the well, mother is the world yeah, and he yeah. and his father are competing. But it affected his, uh, his whole life mm -hmm. in that he, could, he wanted to marry but never could because that was his father's world. Right. He wanted to be a good he wanted to be a, a, a dutiful son and a, um, a father, which he was, by the way. He did have a son uh, uh, with a woman, but the son died very young. Kafka had a son. Kafka had a son yeah, I, I with uh, 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 a woman named Greta Block. Block. Who, Greta Block, yes. who, was the, who uh, was, he used as an intermediary while he was in his very, very torturous engagement to another woman <laughs> mm. and somewhere along the line she became more than an intermediary but back to the, uh, the the point about the father I think who was a very bluff outgoing businessman or haberdasher uh, uh, had some terrible things if the letters if the letter to his father is correct to say about his son's sex life he wanted if he wanted to initiated him into sex, he should go down to the red light district, but don't bring that filth back to the house. I mean, he totally separated any feeling of what the son might want uh, with, his, with his... In his diaries, uh, uh, Kafka writes with great bitterness about his father that he did not give him a Jewish education. He was very bitter about it. Kafka felt that his father has taken away from him these roots which he needed. The fact that Kafka has left in his will that his works should be burned was not just uh, an accident. He really believed to the last minute that he did not succeed. This is clear. Although he hoped against hope, maybe Max Brod or some other people will, will, will find something good in it because if that he, he would have burnt it, himself, but the very fact that he left such a will means that he, he, he thought that he did not succeed. And I think that the reason for why he thought so was that he has convinced himself that, that acting chess, so to say, without, without the rules of chess is, is, is something impossible. In other words, if you say that the king can go whenever he wants, sometimes like a queen, or sometimes like, like a rook, or sometimes like a bishop, the game is, is no game, which is, from a literary point of view, completely right. In other words, I dare to say, if someone would ask me, do you consider Kafka a, a great writer, a writer who has really succeeded, I would say no. I, 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 I once said it's, to have one Kafka in a century is fine but to have a whole army of Kafkas would destroy literature. I said this because there are many bad writers nowadays who, who become, as you said before, Kafkaesque, you know. He will do all kinds of bad things in writing, and he has one explanation. If Kafka could have done it, why sh can I not do it? Which would really destroy literature, and um, in a, as a matter of fact, it has already destroyed a great part of literature in the name of Kafka. And because of this, I think it's very important for writers 
to make to 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 stress this fact that what Kafka allowed himself to do in what he could do because of his talent is not something which the average writer can do. In other words, it wouldn't be a tragedy if many writers would try to imitate Tolstoy or Gogol. They, they might still write some good novels or at least, be, but if b bad writers would try to imitate Kafka, they, they would destroy literature completely because you cannot really play a, a, a game without any rules. But Mr. Singer, let me yes, ask you a question. Yes, my friend. It would be very nice if Kafka had a Jewish heritage. Yes. And it would be very nice if a lot of people living in our times had a good religious background. Yes. But I don't think it's a question of choice either. No, exactly. In, in other words, Kafka heralds in a state of affairs where suddenly the roots are not only lost to Kafka, but telling us that the roots are lost to a lot of people. Exactly. And so yes, a lot of people true. find themselves in the exact same situation that not only Kafka, but Joseph K. is in, you yes. see? Yes. And the question is, now they're struggling with their inner sense of guilt about where they belong, who they are, yes. what their relationship is to their feelings and to their sexuality, which is evident in this book, and finding no real answers. Yes, there is, there is uh, actually, I would say that uh, Kafka felt guilty about it. There is this, this idea of that we are guilty because we were born. Kafka felt that he was born in, in not in the right family, in a way like this. He, he just did not get what, what he needed. And I think that his hostility towards the father was much connected with this, because his father wanted to make a German out of him. This was the ambition of the whole, this petty bourgeois in Prague, not a, even a Czech, but a German. Well, he hated his father for not giving him rules. And, not and then he hated himself for hating his father, because you're not supposed to hate your father. Exactly. And this, and this somehow... Well, that wouldn't make it such an existential guilt, you see, because you then at least have to date it from a certain time, not from the time he's born. So you really have to go back further. See, and the book gives you some clear indications. In every situation that Joseph K. finds himself, he tries to resolve his difficulties, if you remember, by thinking the alternatives. And it's always, well, if I do this, this consequence will happen. But on the other hand, if I do this, it might be better. And he goes back and forth in the thinking, trying to find an answer, and there is no answer. But this, is, this is in his life, too. Yes, but I wonder if that isn't a problem that Kafka is trying to tell us about. In other words, that when you try to fee think through the dilemma of modern man, you've got to be lost. You're lost, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Well, he, yes. he does say that somewhere that there's there's no circumventing the truth yes not and no none of your wiles and none of your rational rationalizations right. will ever get you around the fact of existence he actually says that god is a silent god the the the, the judge who is going to to judge us never told us what he wants from us right. he only judges us which, which is a cruel thing, uh, the most cruel thing, uh, actually they did it in, in Soviet Russia, where they judged in, in time of the revolution people without telling them what, what their sin was. In this respect, Kafka has really proved to be, to be a prophet, that people did it. But uh, as to say far, nothing of Jews going to their death without, without, without anything. resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or Soviet Russia, where, where a thousand people stood in a line and they were sitting a little judge and he said to Siberia, all of them, without even telling them what they have done. In this respect, he was really a, a prophet, but I would say he, he accuses in a way the trial is, while it is man's trial, it's also God's trial. Kafka hints in a way, as we would say, here is a judge who, who doesn't find it for necessary to, to tell the accused what, what they are accused about. But it's also a God's cruel joke, isn't it? it is, no, it, he doesn't take I it would as well, there, At the same time he was writing the trial, he, wrote a, he also wrote a story called The Law. Yes. A little parable about the man who sits at the gate. Wanting yes. ad admittance to the gate. But this is in the trial. This is in the trial, yes. It's part of, yeah. And... It, and at the end, but it's also and he calls as a separate story. He calls him a coarse man. He said a very coarse no, man. this is a different story. It's, it's a, a different short, story. short story. I see. And 
And the gatekeeper says, if you go past this gate, there's an even more terrifying guard who will not let you by. So sit down here, and we'll let you know when you can go through. And, he, and the man sits, and he sits there forever. So he becomes a very, very old man. And the word never comes that he can go through the gate. Yes. He's dying at the end, and he asks the guard, how come no one else, I've been here all my life, and no one else has come to go through the gate? He says, and the this gate is for you. This gate is for you. Yo, this is this in, in the, the book. Trial. You are mistaken. It's, it's right in it's, the trial. It's, yes. But it also yes. exists in, in, yes. in the yes. other story. It's right, right here right. in the trial. Right. Yes, all this. He says, but this he, he, so it's a cruel joke, no? No, well, I wouldn't say it's a joke. It's, it's an accusation more than a joke. Isn't it really a question, just as he says, you know, that it is a trial? And uh, in a trial, you've got to reconcile opposing points of view. I mean, it isn't a question of an answer. Uh, there is a human nature that is conflicted right at the beginning. It's conflicted between what it senses or thinks is a rational way of being in the world and then it has another nature, the countryman who comes to the gate. The yes, countryman yes, is yes. still an animal nature in man that comes off the earth, you see, and is looking for the light mm. or the God or the law mm. that will tell him you are not just an animal, you have to use your mind. Mm. And in this trial of a human being, you see, as to where he will be eventually in life, uh, how he will reconcile these opposing aspects of himself, you see, uh, mm -hmm. Kafka has a pessimistic attitude. There's no question about that. Highly pessimistic. Highly pessimistic. Highly pessimistic. The essence of his saying is, no matter what you do, you are doomed. This is more or less what this book is telling us all the time. But, well, you know, there is a nice thing. I, I admire Joseph K. in the end, because he did fire his lawyer in spite of everything. He did fire him finally, so, yes. yes. And he went to his death walking straight and admitting, saying to the guard, you do not have to hold me. I will go out of the house on my own power. And so whatever fate had in store for him, you know, he had the courage to go and accept it. I, I, I read it differently. Like yeah. I read it a little differently, but that's... Uh, I, I see him trying to maintain a pose to the very end in some way, more in line with total loss of will. Total loss of will. Well, and, um, and, and, and well <coughs> yes, but there is, there is, there is uh, some pride in, in oh, this, you see. Well, anyone who can yes, admit yeah. that he's, and, and perceive that he's dying as a, like a dog, I suppose. No, no, it uh, is. He may feel that the death occurred like a dog, that he was put to death like a dog. You see? Right, okay. But he stood right. up to the death right. like a man. He didn't, you know, cringe and he didn't try to run and he didn't, you know, he, he knew it, it was, was out his, of his fate. Hands. I would say that the little optimism which is there is in the fact that he says that there are a number of gates, a gate <laughs> after a gate after a gate, where there are guardians. And since we don't know what is going on in these gates, there's always some, some, some possibility chance, no? to think maybe, maybe they are right after all. In other words, he does not say that, that the universe is a physical or a chemical accident and, and once the man is, is dead, he is finished. He doesn't say this. He gives a hint that there may be a hereafter because the hereafter may be inside in these gates. But what he says is that as long as you are outside of these gates, everything is, is chaos, is to overwhelm and, ho and hopeless. Let me ask you another yes, question. Yes, yes. Um, in, in the scene that he, uh, you know, the essay that you describe, yeah. uh, the story of the parable, as they call yes. it, of the man at the gate. Yes. You remember at the very end, when he's finally dying, he sees a radiance, a light that shines on the other yes, side. Yes, yes. And uh, the implication that I got was that maybe if he had the courage to throw over the doorkeeper. He says, I shall not let you pass. Uh -huh. But suppose you fight him and pass. Then you meet a more terrifying guardian of another gate. But well, maybe I, he too can be I eventually. Doubt, no, I, I, I doubt this, but, but the fact that there is a radiance means that no matter what happens here, there is a, if there is a radiance on the other side, this means already that our loss is only, so to say, a subjective and a personal kind of loss. It makes it even sadder, though, and even more pessimistic, the radiance does for me, because there's never, in my readings of Kafka, 
there's never any hope that he will ever reach the radiance. To me, it seems that that, it, but because it's, he's t he's completely separated from it. Yeah, but this is all 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 while he's alive. I mean, the anguish, his anguish, would be very little if he didn't perceive the radiance out of his reach. Right? I feel no. I feel that there is a hint in this book that since the radius is there, yeah. and since life is not uh, actually something, the absolute being, where the, the possibility is always that after he dies, he may be able to cross the gate, that, that this guardian heats, heats the gate only as long as man is in the body. Once you have left the body, the, 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 there's a different, you, you don't have to go to the you gate. You run counter to my own philosophy. Yes. And to my experience, even, yes, I think it is possible in life, not regularly, yes, not consistently, but occasionally to experience the radiance in the body. Exactly. And this is the kingdom of heaven on earth. Yes, but yes. This requires a, res a, a recon not a reconciliation, even, but a synthesis or a fusion of the dual aspect of man. Just the fact that it's there. No, sometimes you can integrate the ego and the consciousness and the feelings in the body. You see, the sex with a love, a, a great love, so that at certain moments you really experience the radiance within yourself as a glow. Yes, yes. Well, love is, your, is, love is your synthesis, then. No, love isn't. Love is the possibility. The synthesis... See, radiance is a real physical phenomenon. I have seen people actually reach a point of such good feeling about themselves that they are glowing for a moment. All mystics write about radiance. Exactly. It's a, right, all mystics right. come to this, but, that but if you do this and this, uh, there will be what, a, a light. What do, the, what do they ask you to do but to be one? One with the universal, yes, but one with yes. yourself. In other words, forsake, forsake the body for a while and, and unite yourself with, with cosmic consciousness and then uh, all, 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 all the curbs, all the things which, which hinder you now will suddenly disappear and you will see this radius. But they all say this, uh, mystics say yeah. the same thing, that this is only an achievement for a minute. Just for, for it's not something which you can really right, achieve right. while you are in the body. Well, I don't, uh, I don't think that that's, uh, I think it's only for a sh very short time, like yes. any ecstatic experience. But uh, as I've seen the radiance and the glow in people, there's a difference between seeing the radiance and feeling the cosmic consciousness and being the radiance, or you're yourself going into a state of radiance, and that can only be achieved if you're fully with your body. Now, it's obvious to me from the story of the trial that between the way Joseph K. behaves in his daily life, in his relationships, and the way he behaves as a man versus a woman, there's a big split. In other words, sex is a thing that isn't part of his normal chief clerk's attitude with his stiff collars and his frock coat and his formalities, etc. So you've, you see here the picture, really the split, you know, that is in man, and that to some extent we are all struggling with today and hoping to overcome. By the way, there is no, no sex in this book. I mean, no real sex, because... He, he, there is not a, he's not in love with anybody in, in this book or, or, or even in the castle. Is there sex, any No, any but love? sex, sex no. is used in, uh, in, in the trial, it seems to me, as a... In a negative way. Negative and in, a, and in an absurdist way. Yes. Uh, the first, the first uh, evidence, it seems to me, is when he goes to the law library and pulls down a book and it's a piece of bad pornography. Mm -hmm. Not a law book, but bad pornography. pornography. And also this well, neighbor of his, what is his name, Minster, of his, this, this girl. Burstner. Yeah. Burstner. yeah. She Which does, I, does she play any part in his life or she doesn't? She's she a romantic plays, figure. She's say. a romantic. Yeah. And then yeah. Lenny, the other girl, is yeah. a prostitute. Yeah. And he really sleeps with her yeah. once, though. Yes. But he could, and he has another girlfriend who's also somewhat of a strip dancer, as we would say today, working as in a cabaret, and he visits her regularly to have sex. But uh, he has no real love relationship with a woman. See? On the other hand, he's the most respectable of people. So there you have the split between them. He's drawn towards sex on a vulgar level. This is typical of his time, too, of, of Kafka's time. Not typical in the sense that it was true of everybody, but typical yes. of the way the culture viewed yeah. uh, sex itself. Well, but his own life was a mess in that a mess, way. By and, the way. And yes. in, uh, just to the point of, of uh, Frau Bersner, uh, Fraulein Bersner, uh, 
he was writing the trial about 1914, I think he started it, and it was, uh, he was also engaged to Felice Bauer, which is the same initial, as, and he writes her letters to that effect, saying, mm -hmm. you'll never know I have a character in my book who has the same initials as you. Uh, there was a dis... She, she, re she represented respectability, uh, mm -hmm. and... And if you look at the pic, if you see her picture, uh, his his actual fiance's picture, uh, there was nothing attractive about her at all. Mm. He put her on a pedestal. He set up her as a respectable life, uh, future life. I mean, he so he 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 goes to great lengths telling how they will live and what they will do, and uh, and then he brings it all crashing down by telling her he cannot marry because he's an artist and living with me will be like a monk. Be you think with a she monk. was in love with him? No, I think she no. she thought he was a reasonably decent catch under the circumstances. Yeah. She did break the off the romance, their engagement, and uh, shortly thereafter married a very rich German businessman. Uh huh. Came to the United States and died in about nineteen. She came to the United States. Yes, came to the United States and died about nineteen sixty. Let me ask you, gentlemen, a, a question. See, in Kafka's time, in the story of a trial, there is this um, split in sexuality between respectable women. Who, who are romantic figures and then the women who are loose that you could have. And we have overthrown that to a large extent now in our present-day culture. I mean, we don't respect anybody. <laughs> well, now that's the point I was going to ask you. I mean, uh, certainly uh, sex is much freer now. Say. And in some sense it can't be doubted that um, the introduction of sex indicates and the way, he, you know, that uh, sexual feelings are an underlying source one source of the guilt that caught, you know, that Joseph K. feels. Now, what about modern man in a present-day society? Would, does that guilt exist? Uh, how does yes, I think so. Well, I think so, too, but strangely, you find that it's denied. My People say, I have no guilt about sex. My feeling is that, that sex has only a meaning and a sense if there are things which you are allowed to do and you are not allowed to do. In other words, if you approach sex with a feeling that you are allowed to do everything, then the whole thing disappears. It becomes really uh, only physical and minor. In other words, the, the, the fact that men had always so many taboos about sex was not just arbitrary or, or fanaticism, or, but it was a, the part of sex itself. Because the, the reason why men make such, such a big fuss about sex, while the animals just treat it like anything else, just like some... Uh, part of, of life without any is the fact that they don't have any taboos. And whatever taboos they have, they are natural taboos. In other words, when a cow is not in heat, she does not want the bull. If she is in heat, any bull is good, and this is, this is how they live. And because man has created scores of taboos about sex, and he has, he, he has try to believe that a woman has such a thing as loyalty and that there is such a thing as, as love from the third side. And then to be able really to develop this, this, this sex, and he has developed it to a high degree mm -hmm. until the 19th century, where also in the time of the Middle Ages, where with, with knighthood and so on. What we are living now through is because we, we have rejected all guilt that we are rec actually rejected all sex. Because I don't uh, uh, believe, like some uh, uh, psychologists believe, that guilt is really such a, a bad thing as people think. I think that guilt is actually the very essence of the human being. In other words, if you don't feel guilty about anything, you are not alive altogether. And to me, the fact that we have rejected all the taboos about sex, and, we ha and men is trying to kill jealousy, which was almost an instinct, or, or it was an instinct, is something which may destroy, really, the, the, la the last vestige of, of, of humanity. Restraint. Restraint altogether. Yeah. But isn't well, the story... Freud came to this rather depressing conclusion in Civilization is this contents, right. didn't he? But isn't this yes. the story of, yes. of, this, of this trial? In other words, it is to say that um, we have to have you know, the, the limits, the restraints, uh, that it cannot be without limits and free. Ex I agree with you. Yes, exactly. On the other hand, at the time of the trial, that is in the society of the trial, the limits were very fixed, if you know that culture. 
they were very rigid. It's a yes. absolutely rigid society. And the end of product of that kind of thing has to be death, if you believe Kafka, and I do. So the, it's, it's not a matter of saying we have to have limits or saying we can't be free or that we have to be free and can't have limits. If we have limits that are rigid, we must, there is no alternative but yeah, to rigid, lose our yes, life. Yes. On the other hand, if we have no limits, we go into chaos and we lose our meaning. We right? lose the meaning of life. Very right. So the yes, question yes. is now, how does a human being, any human being, today or in Kafka's time, find a modus vivendi, a balance, uh, not a very narrow path, but a, a broad enough path through these conflicts so that he can make I, his life there is no, fulfilling? I would say there is no way for the skeptic, but there is a way for the man who, 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 who accepts a certain kind of religion. Let's say that the pious Jew or the pious Christian who believes that marriage is a holy institution and, and he, he marries a woman who has the same belief, he has solved his problem, so to say, for himself. But you cannot uh, solve it if you, are, if you are skeptic, if you believe that all laws are made by men, not by God, these taboos lose their meaning, and if the taboo loses the meaning, love loses its meaning. I once spoke to a man, and I happened to know that this man had a wife who betrayed him, and I, I suspected that he knew about it. And we spoke about jealousy, and this man said to me, jealousy is something which a man can overcome. And I think that this is happening today. Thousands of millions of men have made up their mind that they are going, that marriage has no meaning, the woman does not belong to them, they, they don't care about the past of the woman. In other words, the taboos are being destroyed. And, I, and it's my deepest conviction that together with these taboos being destroyed, we will suddenly one day see that we have destroyed romantic love altogether. Well, we are it's practically it's, gone it's in practically, many cases. I would say, yes, it's gone. As, uh, in our, in in our environment, what, what well, we Ka see. Kafka felt very, very strongly about romantic love. If you read letters his to his letters, fiancés, I guess so. Yes, uh, and he he was deeply troubled by feelings of of sexuality uh, in his letters, where he writes to what he obviously feels is a very respectable woman. Uh, at one point, he tells her that he's writing this disgusting story. It's the metamorphosis. And he tries to tell her that the, the, hor the horrible things in this story come out of the very soul, same soul that loves you. Mm. See? Now, whether he was doing that for dramatic effect, I don't think so. Well, I think he was deeply... What he meant is that man is becoming in danger of becoming really a beetle. No, no, he, he tried to come to terms in his art with that with those two warring selves. And I think he saw very, he saw it, uh, his whole life as a, as a struggle with a demon in himself and, uh, and, and, his, and his need or his, the self that he thought had to be his father's son and a respectable burger of the community. Even to the, I think he makes a great deal about this and when he discovered that he had tuberculosis in about 1917. In other words, that he is doomed. He, he said that he thought he saw that as a victory for the for uh, he's being destroyed by his warring selves. Mm. But, I mean, he saw that physical disease as a had a spiritual root. The trial, in a way, he, right. he might have been the trial. Yes. yes, but he saw. I mean, he very. I I, I don't think we can talk long enough about the, ter the spiritual torments. And the spiritual crisis of that man. Oh, this man suffered terribly. Uh, and when I mean, to the point that he he saw it affecting his entire life, and, and including his health. If I w if I would have to, to make a, a short definition about Kafka, I would say this is a man who could not live without God, and he could not live with God. Now, how many people are in that situation today? We are all of in. The, I would say it's we are all in the same. Then situation. why can't we give it that form and that focus that? I will in. tell you why. Because to live with God is, is, not, is not enough that you decide to live with God. You have to believe, really, that, that God, God has revealed himself on Mount Sinai to Moses. And if you are Christian, that, God has, has, uh, that uh, Jesus is God's son and son and son. If you don't have this belief, you cannot really be a religious man 
in, in the old way as, as our grandparents were. We need the, a new mythology. Yes. So. In the, in the, on the other hand, if you say to yourself, there is no God, and we are all on accident, and, and, and the...